The focus of this video is to demonstrate how we use the Haitian in solving optimization problems. All right, so we are going to basically work through an example and uh, show how we can combine matrices, the use of the Kremers rule, as well as the Haitian in uh, solving uh, this specific optimization problem. So the question says, if a firm produces two goods sold in two separate markets where the average revenues are given is P1 is equals to 130 minus 4Q1 minus Q2, then P2 is equals to 160 minus 2Q1 minus 5Q2, then the total cost is equals to 2Q1 squared plus 2Q1 Q2 plus 4Q2 squared. Then the question is find values of Q1 and Q2 where total profit is maximized. And it says use Kremers rule for the first order condition. And the second part requires us to check the second order condition, right? So if you are to analyze what the question requires, it's basically first to solve an optimization problem, right? So what is being optimized in this case is profit. They are being maximized, right? So we want to uh, find a level of Q1 and Q2 that maximize the profits. So the first part of the question is basically asking us to find the critical values, the critical points, right? And uh, there is a directive as well in that we have to use Kramer's rule in actually finding that. All right, so how are we going to use the Kramer's rule, right? And how are we going to check for second order condition is basically what we're going to discuss. All right, so the first thing that we need to do uh, is to define our objective function, right? So we know Q1 and Q2 are the choice variables, and the objective function in this case is profit maximization, right? So when we define the objective function, we want the profits, which is basically equals to the total revenue from the two quantities less the total cost, right? Total revenue for quantity one will basically be price one times Q1 plus uh, the total revenue from quantity two will be price two times Q2, then less total cost, right? Total cost uh, basically, it's a function of both Q1 and Q2, simply meaning that um, the, the the production function in this case um, uh, is one system that basically produces both goods Q1 and Q2, right? All right, so substituting back from the given information, right? Remember, our profit function has to be a function of Q1 and Q2, right? So we're going to multiply the P to the Qs, right, and then subtract the total cost function, right. Uh, if you reduce your equation correctly, you define your profit function basically is equals to 130Q1 minus 6Q1 squared minus 5Q1 Q2 plus 160Q2 minus 9Q2 squared, right. So once we have defined the objective function, the next step now will be to find the turning points, right. So from what we learned um, earlier on about solving the optimization problems in cases where we have more than one choice variable. Uh, the condition is that you want the total differential dessert to be equal to zero. But we also know that for dessert to be equal to zero, your first uh, partial derivatives also have to be equal to zero. So what you're going to do is from the profit function, we'll basically take the first partial derivatives. So when you Differentiate the profit function with respect to Q1. Oh, sorry about that. With respect to Q1, right, we'll come up with uh, your first partial derivative with respect to Q1 is equals to 130 minus 12Q1 minus 5Q2 equated to zero. And then we also take the first partial derivative of your profit function with respect to Q2, which is 160 minus 5Q1 minus 18Q2 equated to zero. So now we have basically come up with two equations, right? Which is basically a system of linear equations, right? So the directive was that we have to use Kramer's rule to solve for the turning points Q1 and Q2, right? So we have got a system of equation. For us to use Kramer's rule, we know that we have to use matrices. 
right? So the next step is basically to work with the two system of linear equation and put them in a matrix notation that allows us to solve for Q1 and Q2 using the Kramer's rule, right? So we know that when we want to put um, an equation in matrix notation, we need to separate endogenous variables from exogenous variables, right? So what we are going to do with the two equations, we will have all um, elements that have got the endogenous elements, Q1 and Q2 on the left-hand side of the equation and everything else on the right-hand side of the equation. So we are basically moving 130 to the other side of the equation as well as moving 160 to the other side of the equation, right? So we now have our two equations, right? And now we can put it, put this two equation in our AX equals to D notation, right? So we have the two by two matrix with the coefficients minus 12, minus five, minus five and minus 18. And then our column vector of our unknowns has got Q1 and Q2. And then we also have the, the column vector of solutions, our D vector, right, with minus 30 and 160, right? So in solving for uh, solutions using the Kramer's rule, we know that the first step, we have to find the determinant of our A matrix, right? Um, so when you calculate your determinant of the A matrix, we multiply the diagonal elements, and then we subtract also the product of the off-diagonals, right? And our determinant in this case, it's close to 191. And that determinant is also not equal to zero, which means that a unique solution exists for our problem, right? Then now proceeding to the next step in the Kramer's rule procedure, what we need to do now is to calculate the determinant of your A1 and the determinant of your A2. To get the determinant of your A1, we replace the elements uh, uh, of the first column in our A matrix with the D vector, right? And then if you do that, we find the determinant of that new A1 matrix. Basically, uh, in this case, it's going to come out as equals to 1,540, right? We also calculate the determinant of your A2. A2, basically, we are replacing elements of the second column in our A matrix with our D vector, right? And then when you calculate the determinant of the A2, it's going to be 1,270, right? So to calculate now your Q1 star, we take the determinant of your A1 divided by the determinant of the A matrix, and that is equals to 8.06. And then your Q2 star is going to be the determinant of your A2 divided by the determinant of your A matrix, which is going to be 6.65, right? So these are our critical points, our turning points, Q1 star and Q2 star. And now the next step is to ascertain if these two points actually maximize profits, right? So what we need to do is check for second order conditions. How we check for second order conditions, we say that we formulate the Hessian. Hessian is basically a matrix of the second derivatives. We have got the direct partials uh, on the diagonal and then the cross partials on the off diagonals. So if we are to go back to the two equations that we derived when we took the first order conditions, um, differentiating again equation one with respect to Q1 will give us our Fxx, which in this case is going to be minus 12. And then differentiating the first equation with respect to Q2 will give us our Fxy is minus five. And then differentiating mm, the second equation with respect to Q1 is your Fyx. And then differentiating second equation with respect to Q2 is your Fyy. And then basically we come up with um, that equation, that matrix, sorry, which is our Hessian. And then if you calculate the determinant of that, it's going to be equals to 191. To make a conclusion on whether it's a maximum or a minimum, we look at the value of fxx, which is in this case minus 12, and that is less than zero. And then the determinant is greater than zero. So going back to the sufficient conditions, we know that if you have these two uh, in this order, 
it means we have got a negative definite, so we conclude that profit is maximized. All right. So what we also need to note from this example is that our Haitian, basically the determinant of the Haitian, is also the same as the determinant of the A matrix when you are working with a linear case. Right. So remember that every time you work with a linear case, the determinant of your Haitian is going to be the same as the determinant of your A matrix. 